concept called Makers. Not like the not like the whiskey Makers Mark, but I guess we need all two. Oh, whiskey. Um, M A C R S. What this stands for is modified, accelerated. Cost recovery system makers. They used to have another another one that they used. Um, I can't remember what the acronym was for. For so when you see this makers property, they're talking about this particular system, which is what we talk about in this chapter. He said there used to be different methods of depreciation, um, and we saw kind of a remnant of that with the 31 and a half year, which is still, um, actually it's called acres. It's not modified accelerated. It's, it's accelerated cost rec recovery system is the other one. You don't have to worry about that, but do know what this acronym stands for, okay? Hint, I think you've got a test question somewhere along the line that asks you what that acronym stands for. All right. So there are three methods under makers. 200% declining balance, switching to straight line. 150% declining balance, switching to straight line, and straight line. Okay, so we don't have any sum of the year's digits. We don't have any, you know, units of, units of production, whatever, what have you. These are our three choices. So, the, and again, we don't, well, I shouldn't say we don't get to choose. There are certain times when you, you do get to choose if you want to use straight line um, instead of one of these other methods. Now, obviously, a declining balance method, conceptually, you guys understand that, right? You're gonna take more depreciation up front. You get more in the first few years of the asset life because we figure it's gonna lose more value as well in those first few years. So if you get a bigger deduction in the first few years of the use, you're gonna get, you're gonna have a lower tax liability, right? So the IRS does allow you to choose straight line depreciation for some of these assets, even if it's a um, declining balance method, because essentially what you're doing is you're giving up current tax, uh, tax benefit for future tax benefits. So they're not so concerned about that. They just don't want you, you cannot, if you have an asset that is supposed to be depreciated in straight line, you can't then use an accelerated method, okay? So those are our three, 200%, 150%, and straight line. So three, five, seven, and 10 year property, personal property, uses 200% declining balance. You don't have to know how, you don't have to know how to calculate this. The tables are going to help you out and tell you what percentage in every in each and every year. 15 and 20 year property has 150% declining balance. In both of these cases, in the year in which straight line gives a higher depreciation amount, then it switches to straight line. Then the rest of the depreciation is taken on a straight line basis. Okay, so it doesn't keep declining. It declines to the point at which, and again, software would always calculate this for you, the tables calculate it as well. Okay, so you don't have to figure out when that is or what that, that difference is. Um, now you do have to know, like the tables are gonna give you percentages, so you need to know how to multiply percentages, but other than that, you don't have to know how, when to switch it or how to switch it or anything like that. But at the point at which the depreciation would yield a, that straight line depreciation would yield a higher depreciation deduction than it switches to straight line. Okay, and you'll see, I'll show you in the tables when that happens. It, it um, you can see it in the tables when that, when that, occur, that uh, switch occurs. Straight line is required for all real property, except for land, we're not depreciating land. So, straight line is always going to be used for 27 and a half year property and 39 year property. Remember, that's, those are our only two choices for, for real property. Um, and we're always going to use straight line. So that real property is really quite easy, right? We don't have any of that mid-quarter convention stuff with real property. 
Um, we just have two depreciation methods. Pretty easy to keep straight which, which one we're using when. So yeah. I want to understand something from you about it. It can be new or it can be used. Either one. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep, either one. If you purchased it, you get to depreciate whatever you paid for it, your cost, okay? Now, obviously the cost of it, the value of it may have gone down or up since it was originally built, but um, anyway. So, and as it says here, you can make an election to use straight line for any of this because it's going to yield up front a lower deduction right a lower tax deduction but once you make that choice and you can do it on an asset by asset basis so you can say I want to use straight line on this computer but I want to use declining balance on that monitor you can make a choice which one but once you choose it you have to stick with it again the software is going to have that because what the software does is you enter the information into the system, it automatically calculates, and it automatically calculates that mid-month as well, or the, I'm sorry, the mid-quarter. So it will determine, okay, they purchased this much personal property, more than 40% of it was, was uh, placed in service in the last quarter, so therefore we're gonna use the mid-quarter convention. So the software figures all of that stuff out for you and it keeps track of what method of depreciation is being used, okay? Now, in the olden days, it didn't, but lucky for us, we've got software that keeps track of all that, which is one reason why it's really good when you have, so if you're gonna work in tax, um, once you get a client, it's really hard for them to switch <laughs> because you've got all of their information. You've got all of it into, this, into the system. Now, that's not to say that they can't switch, but when you get a new client for the first time, if they've had another accountant, now you're having to transfer all of that information from where they were in their depreciation into your system, right? So that, that switch can be cumbersome, but you get to charge them for it. <laughs> so, so there you go. All right, let's look at the calculation. And we're gonna go, uh, maybe we'll go to the table first before we do this. So, in fact, let's go through these tables. I'll show you. I'll show you what they look like. So this is in the appendix. Is it I don't, page one hundred? So it's must be in the appendix of your chapter, not the appendix of your textbook. So at the at the end of your of your chapter, I think this is where this is. Um, all right, half year convention. Up here at the top, it tells you. 200% or 150%. So th this table combines both of those declining balance methods. That's okay. We don't, we don't have to worry too much about that. But we do have to know, in order to know that, we that this is the table we have to use, we have to know what convention we're using, right? So we determined, okay, we did not place more than 40% of our personal property in service during the last quarter, so we can go ahead and use the half year convention. That means everything's going to get start depreciating in the middle on July 1st. Now, within that half year convention, we've got different class lives. You'll see we stop at 20 years because anything that's 27 and a half years, we're not going to use half year convention. We're going to use a mid month convention. So nothing with an asset life over 20 years is going to be using this table. So if we have, let's say we have a piece of some furniture. Furniture is seven year property. We place it in service in the first year. We look at the column for seven years. So this is, the, this is what we're gonna use. We're gonna multiply our basis by this percentage. And that's how much depreciation we take in the first year. So for example, let's say we bought, and we'll use a couple of different examples here. So we've got um, furniture and we bought it uh, August 7th and it was $10,000. And then we bought some equipment and we bought that uh, November 6th and it was $5,000. That's all we did, just those two pieces. Okay, so we know which, which convention are we using? 
we're using the half year convention, right? Because we did not play, even though we did place some uh, property into service during the last quarter, it was not more than 40%, right? It was what, 33.3%. Okay, cool. So we're gonna use the half year convention here. Furniture is seven year property. Equipment is five year property. So let's look first at the, at the uh, furniture. Seven year, we're in the first year, 14.29%. So take this times 14.29, those are percentages. So 14.29, that's a four, sorry. That's our depreciation deduction in the first year. For equipment, November 6th, again, we're using half year. We still, so even though we purchased it the sixth, we get half a year of depreciation. That's five year property. Look in the five year column in the first year, 20%. Okay, five year, 20%, a thousand. So our total depreciation, whoops, two, four, two, nine. This is for year one, okay? Year one. Okay, let's look at year two. We owned it the whole year, both of these pieces of equipment, okay? So our furniture and our equipment, we don't, it doesn't really matter. This doesn't matter anymore. We do still need to know though, our, our basis, 10,000. So this is our basis and 5,000. Now in year two, you'll see that our percentages are higher. That's because remember year one is only half a year. Year two is a full year. So seven year property, second year, 24.49% times 20, what did I say, 24.49? So 24.49. Five year property, 32%. What is that? 32 times 5. How much? 1.6. Okay. So we get more depreciation deduction in the second year. 4,049. All right, let's say in year three, we sell it. So now, the base never change for this part. Well, in this example, no, because we didn't make any changes to, like we didn't make any additions to it. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. The adjusted basis does change for purposes of calculating any gain or loss, but we're still, using the, this original basis for our, calc our annual calculation, okay? So if we sold it in year three, again, we've got our furniture and our equipment, and say we sold it March 4th and uh, August 17th. We have to use the half year convention because we use the half year convention in the first year. So we're still gonna use the half year convention. So what we're gonna do here is, now you'll see that in the third year though, this is assuming that we owned it the whole year. So if we owned, if we didn't sell it, these are the percentages that we would use. We didn't own it for the whole year. So we have to use half of that, okay? We're only gonna, we're gonna, only gonna depreciate it for half of that year because that's the year that we sell it. So. March 4th, again, we've got 10,000 is our basis, 5,000 is our basis. So for the seven year property, so 17.49%, what is that half? Well, we'll also, I'll put this up here. I'll get, I'm running out of room. So 17.49, of that or one half of that percentage right so 10,000 1749 half of that 
would be what? 1750. How much? What's 17.49? What's half of 17.5? 875. 875? Okay, so $875 would be our depreciation for this year, this last year. And then 5,000, five year. I know this is a mess, sorry. Five year, we're in the third year, 19.2, so 8.6. I'm sorry, 9.6. No, yes. Yeah, 9.6. 9 times 9.6%. And I get that again by taking the 17, no, sorry, 19.2 times 50%. If I'm taking half a year of depreciation, so I get this here, five years in our third year, but we have to take half of that because we're selling it that year. Right, does that make sense? Yeah. So, uh, let's see, nine, so 960 would be, let's see, 450, 480. Is that right? So in that last year, five, we get $1,355 of depreciation. Because that's the year that we sold it. If we hadn't sold it, we'd get to take these full percentages of depreciation. Okay, That year of sale is a little bit tricky because you've got to remember that. And a lot of students, I will tell you, a lot of students forget that part. They forget that in the last year and then they, they calculate using this number and they can't figure out why what they did wrong. So. Just kind of keep that in mind that that's that's a that's a place where there a lot of error happens. So I can take a picture for this one. Yeah, sure. Let's go for it. Yeah. I'm going to show you. Um, we're going to go through an, another example that's in the book as well. And then we're going to take a proportion based on so instead of 50% so like if it's sold in the first quarter we would take 1.5 divided by 12 and that's the percentage that we would use we multiply that by this the full year percentage because it's one and a half so we're going to depreciate it through February 15th which is 1.5 twelfths of the year so we're going to take 1.5 twelfths of the full year depreciation in that last year. Mm -hmm. um, does everybody get that? I said that's probably the trickiest part of yours of this is that uh, last year. So let's go. I'm going to show you the other uh, uh, tables here. Watch this video, you get to see me coming all the time. <laughs> all right, so that's the half year convention. We only have one table for this. The mid quarter convention, however, has four tables because there are four. Remember, the half year convention, there's only one choice as far as when we place it in service. So we only need that one table. For the mid quarter convention, though, we got four choices middle of one of the four quarters. So again, looks the same, but you've got to make sure property placed in service in the first quarter. So remember, we're not calculating all of the property using necessarily the same table because with the mid quarter convention, we may have property that we start depreciating in the first quarter, in the second quarter, in the third quarter, you know, we could have property all over the place. When we, when we start depreciating it, if we're using the half year convention, we're just gonna have one starting point for all of that property, okay? So, mid quarter convention, property placed in service in the first quarter. We've got the same columns because these are the only choices for asset class lives for this particular convention. Remember the real property is going to be, uh, is gonna be a mid month convention. These are the same. 
we've got our same percentages. So you do the same thing. So if we have a, a piece of property, let's say we're using the mid month convention. I'm sorry, mid quarter, mid quarter convention. And we've got equipment and furniture again. And we placed the, let's see, the furniture. So now it's 10,000 and the equipment was 5,000. And we placed this in service January 4th, and the furniture was December 5th. All right, so now we do need to use the mid-quarter convention, right? Because more than 40% of our total personal property was placed in service during the fourth quarter of the year. So $5,000, um, equipment, again, this is, so the equipment is five-year property, the furniture is seven year, and this is year one. Okay, so in the first year, if we place this at property in the equipment in, pro in service during January 4th, this is the first quarter of the year, right? So we can use this table. We can't use this table for the, for the furniture. We have to use a different table because that's gonna, we're going to use the fourth quarter here. Okay, so equipment, that is five-year property placed in service during the first year, 35%. So 2500 for our first year. So, so you want to use the first quarter for this one? Because mm. this thing there. Yes. Thank you. Uh-oh. Do I owe you your money back now? <laughs> I used the wrong table, didn't I? I meant to do that. I just wanted, I was testing you. <laughs> We're going to use this one for property place and service in the fourth quarter. Good catch. So seven year property. 3.57. So you can see the difference. It would have been 25%. Now it's 3.57%. $357 first year. Okay. So uh, we already have to total that up. That's right. So there's year one. Year two. We owned it all year. Owned both pieces all year. So go back up to our first quarter so again we got our equipment five thousand five year times what percentage you guys tell me 26 26 percent property it's our second year what percentage are we going to use 27.15 yeah 27.55 percent do we see where that comes from seven year we're in our second year okay so seven thousand times 27.55 is how much Twenty eight Nine twenty eight. Nine twenty eight. Twenty five. Twenty five. Nine point five. Point five. Oh, point. You said seven thousand times twenty seven point five, right? Yeah. Five five. Oh, five five. I have nine. Oh, I have the wrong number. 
It's a big number. <laughs> Uh -huh. Okay, so you're gonna, you're, it's 7,000 oh, times so point, it's times a percentage. Sorry. Percent. Yeah, sorry. That's okay. So what, is this right? 1928? 1928. Okay. 0.5. Okay, so that was right up to you. 1928. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna get complicated here. So. So now we're going to sell it and we're going to sell the equipment on May 7th and we're going to sell the furniture on December 30th. to the correct table. First quarter, five year property. Well, actually now we have to use whatever quarter that we sold it in. So, I think it is, hold on a second. Um, let, me th let me think of the calculations here. So, first quarter that would be yeah we didn't place it in service in the first quarter but again this is assuming we still have to use the same table third year but we have to take a proportion of this okay so this is the equipment is five-year property did I get that right equipment five property okay five-year property third year we're going to go through May 15th, though. So that is how many months of the year? January, February, Five. March, April, four and a half. We're going to take four and a half divided by 12, because that's four and a half twelfths of this percentage. Sorry, this percentage. So times 4.5. Five twelfths, so four and a half months out of 12 months during the year, we're getting that proportion, times 15.6%. So we're gonna multiply that by the 5,000. I should bring, oh, well, my calculator's on my phone. I guess you're bringing it. $292 yeah, for two cents. 292? Yeah. So we'll call it $293. Is it 50 cents? Mm -hmm. You said we'll round it up to 50 cents. Okay. So the furniture, again, this is the fourth quarter. Use the same table. Third. Seven year property. Third year. So now we are going to depreciate this for 10 and a half months of the year, right? The middle of, go to the middle of the fourth quarter. That's, yes, October 15th. So October, I'm sorry, November 15th. So October plus half of the month of November. So 10 and a half. So this is gonna be 10.5 divided by 12 times whatever percentage we have here. So it's seven year property, third year, 
about two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Portion of the year that we're depreciating it, and then multiplying that by the full year's depreciation. 0.1968. And then, yeah, 0.1968, and multiplying that by the, the basis. Yeah. Isn't it great that the software does this? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's, did you want a picture of that one too? <laughs> no, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Every day for study. Yeah. So mid, mid quarter convention, we've got four quarters in a year, so we got four tables that we're going to use. These are super easy. Again, real property is so easy. So now we got to we have to figure the month that we placed it in service. This is 27 and a half year property, residential real estate. Okay, somebody's living in it. We're going to take the month that we placed it into service, and then this is the percentage that we use. So if we placed it in service in October, 0.758% uh, depreciation times the, times the basis, that's what our depreciation expense is gonna be, okay? All of the intervening years, now they've got all of these listed here. I don't know why they listed all of them. They kind of vary by hundreds of a, percent here uh, month to month but again this is going to be for the full year so for the first year this is the the full year depreciation you can see so most years we've got 3.636 percent depreciation right that first year if we place it in service in january we're giving up half a month of depreciation because we place it in service as of the 15th of the month so it's going to be a little bit less 3.485 percent if we place it in service in december we only get half a month of depreciation for that whole year right so that's why that proportion is so small um same thing in that last year okay but so you've got to figure out but but you're not instead of quarters so you're going to have 1.5 for the quarters you're going to use 1.5 over 12 or 4.5 over 12, or 7.5 over 12, or 10.5 over 12 for that proportion of the year. For this one, it's 0.5 over 12, 1.5 over 12, 2.5 over 12 to get that proportion it, to, to do that math. Does that make sense? Because the you're, you've got 12 months that you're dealing with rather than four quarters, okay? Uh, so that's the table for 27 and a half. So you can see if you depreciated it, now it's kind of weird because it's 27 and a half years, but we go down to 29 years. But remember, our first year is a partial year, right? So that would take us to 28 years. 29, it's point, that point 0.5 of a year. So you can see if you sold it in the first half of the year, you're not gonna get any depreciation. Right? Yes. But in the last half of the year, then you'll get a little bit of depreciation in that last year. This is 31 and a half years. Just ignore that one. All right. So for the 39 year, there must not be a variation in the percentages here. Because what they did was they compressed years 2 to 39 for the 39 year. Okay? But the same concept applies. Right? You're going to use the mid month convention so you're going to start it whatever month it is that you bought it september 1st you're going to take 0.749 percent of the full basis in depreciation all of the years up to 39 again that first year is partial that's why we have 40 years instead of 39 because this is the remainder of that last year now this one Actually, this one does well if you depreciate if you sell it in this last year they're going to give you the percentage in the last year if 
you don't, if it's one of these years, though, you're going to have to calculate it out. Okay? Questions? All right, so let's look at the example as well that they've given us in the book. In May 2022, Samantha purchased equipment for $8,000. All right, so it's equipment that is five-year property. Okay. So this is May 2022. Equipment. This is five-year. For $8,000. A work truck for 19000 So she purchased this all in May. So we're good, right? And even if it was December, so if it was December, the only pieces that we're going to use, the only property that we're going to use that um, mid-quarter convention with is the personal property. We're not going to include in any of our calculation on whether we're using the mid-quarter convention or not. We're not going to include that 120,000 because that's a building, it's real property. That's that's fine. So equipment, uh, truck. So that's also five years for 19,000. And building, which is 27. Wait. Uh, office building. Okay, that's the key. Office building. 39 here. So. So I'm seeing the equipment seven years for the six hour. That doesn't work. That example up there, pretend that was a computer, not equipment. Um, okay, so we're gonna use the half year convention. We would look at that table for the half year convention. I'm not gonna click on it because otherwise I gotta walk back there again and fix it. I'm gonna take the $8,000 times that 14.29%, which we used before, right, to get depreciation of ex expense of $1,143. Oh, I got that, okay. This is the total of both, okay. So for the first year for the equipment, $1,143. For the truck, we're gonna use the half year convention, but for five year property. So we can use the same table, but a different column, right? 19,000 times that 20% that, that we would have looked up, 3,800 depreciation total for the year. They've done that for every single year, and it looks like she has owned this for all of the years. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that makes sense. There should be eight calculations, because again, that first year and that last year, we're taking half a year each, combine those two, that's a full year. To fully depreciate this property, Five-year property, again, one, two, three, four, five, six. So again, half a year here, half a year here. For our total depreciation, 
39 year property, we're gonna use that 39 year mid month table, which is the, the la that very last table that had the condensed amounts on it, 120,000. The first year, if we were to look at that table, we would get a percentage of 6.05%, which comes from, so it would be the fifth month of the year. So we would look in the column that's for the fifth month. For all of these years, she's gonna get $3,077 of depreciation expense. And then the very last year, she's gonna get 1,148, okay? That make sense? Sorry, the equipment thing. They're right, it's seven years. I was thinking of something else. I was thinking of computers. I had that in my head. Okay, this is in the book, so. Um, if both the equipment and the truck had been purchased in the fourth quarter, that would have exceeded 40% of the basis, the aggregate basis of the acquired personal property, then we would have to use the mid-quarter convention. So we'd use a different table and it would be based on which quarter each of those items was purchased in, okay? These are the conventions that are used, or the, or the, I'm sorry, the, the class lives, the convention. So this is just kind of a summary of everything that we went through there, um, except for basis, obviously. Basis is gonna be an individual um, on a case-by-case -case basis, but got it all separated out here. So only midline, only, or only mid-month, only straight line is when you get into that personal property that it gets a little fuzzy. Questions? Should we try these before we get into the 179? We've got like 15 minutes left. So we're gonna have to bleed over into the next day a little bit for that depreciation. These other depreciation components, that's okay. I wanna make sure we cover it thoroughly. Let's look at this, these examples here and try and, you guys try and work on them, okay? So, Shu purchased a piece of business equipment for $12,000. It's equipment purchased on May 3rd. The only business asset, what is the depreciation expense related to the equipment? All right, so first off, what convention are we gonna use? Because it was purchased May 3rd. If we had purchased it December 3rd, then we would have to use the mid-quarter convention, right? If this is the only piece of equipment though, we can use the half-year convention. The equipment is seven-year. This is not computer equipment. So using the tables, if you can look up, what's the percentage, the first year percentage? Fourteen point two nine percent. Okay, so we're going to take that fourteen point two nine times twelve thousand dollars. So year one. Seventeen fifteen for depreciation equipment. So that would be the first year. They didn't, I actually didn't even ask for the first year, but that's the first year. If Shu sold the equipment on January 5th, what would the depreciation expense be for 2024? All right, so this is year one. Let's, let's go through and do year two would be, what was, this was 2022. So this would be 2023, 2024. So let's do, it doesn't ask for the full year for 2023, but let's do that one. So what's our percentage for the second year? 24, 
percent or twelve thousand? Sorry. It is how much? Twenty nine thirty nine. Twenty nine thirty nine. All right. Now, twenty twenty four, we sold it January fifth. Still didn't use that half year convention, though, right? We're going to use the same convention that we used the year that we purchased it. So we're going to get half a year depreciation off of this. All right. So year three. What's the, per the full percentage? 1749. Remember, we can't use that. We have to use half of that, right? So, 17, we're going to take, we'll, we'll call it 612s. One half times 12,000. you to do if they want you to do this calculation first and then multiply it by the basis it may be that you do this the 17.49 times 12,000 and then divide that by two right so if you're like off on one of these and you're just sure you're doing it right check out the order that you do the multiplication 1049 1049 yeah. okay so your year three depreciation 1049 Uh, Davis purchased an apartment complex on March 5th, 2022. So, 3522, 330,000 building. Apartment complex. What kind of property, real property is that? Residential, right? So, what's the what uh, depreciation life do you want? Yes. 27.5 years. So that's the table that you would look at is the 27 and a half year table. So in the first year, what's the percentage if it was purchased in March? We're in the 24% marginal tax bracket, and this absorbs income that's in that bracket, right? 24%. Okay. So in this just this first year, we saved $2,280 in taxes. 
with this deduction. Okay? So more depreciation means lower taxes. The beauty of the beauty of this is oftentimes, well especially for buildings, people don't pay cash for buildings. Even if they have the cash, they don't pay cash for buildings, they borrow. Now, not too long ago, interest rates were awesome. And you could pay maybe three, four percent. So you would get this deduction, but the cash flow out is less than this. So you're saving money in taxes. You are netting more in cash flow during the year by doing this. So that's kind of the beauty of this depreciation, right? And then you sell it, and chances are it's gone up in value, and so you get a gain as well. So you're winning, you wonder how the, the rich get richer. They do stuff like that. They use the, and it's, and it's all perfectly legal. It's in the tax code. So, um, let's see here. We only have five minutes left, so this is actually probably a good place to stop. Any questions? Yeah? Okay. I'm going to erase this. We will finish up on Thursday and next Tuesday. So you see why I gave you two weeks? <laughs> this is a huge chapter. I, I wish they would separate the depreciation part out and do its own chapter.